Okay. Um, I have a to make. As the board president, I have determined that in-person meeting is not practical or prudent because of the statewide COVID-19 disaster. This meeting is being recorded. I'll call the meeting to order. We call the roll, please. Oh, okay, Susan. Okay. Or some call it. I'll do it. I'll do it, Barbara. Oh, because I'm Barbara Levin. Here. Susan Toulis here. Roll in person. Julian Pay. Philip Brown. Here. Joyce Hayes. Chastity Mays. Here. Don Prosser. Here. Harriet Simon. Here. Okay. In the webinar, pardon me. You might want to wait one minute okay. more because it's actually on my clock. It says 4:29. Just to, I know Gwen was planning to come in to do hers as okay. well. Okay. Get down. Who's here? At least it's a beautiful day out today. It is gorgeous. It really. We should, we should have our meeting outdoors. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Since we don't have to worry about papers flying around. That's right. True. <laughs> This is just water. There's nothing bad in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it should <laughs> be. <laughs> A likely story. <laughs> no one would blame you. I mean, it, <laughs> these are difficult times. They are. They are indeed. Hi, Roland. Hello. Hi. Okay, so add Roland to the list of attendees. And it looks like Julian and Joyce might be absent. Gwen is coming in now. Right. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're a little faint, but I can hear you. Yeah, it said I was muted on my phone, so I had to hook my microphone up. I'm not sure what the issue is. <laughs> I can but. hear you okay. 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 <clears throat> looks like it's 431. Okay. okay. In the webinar environment, participants may type questions or statements into the Q&A at this time and may request access to speak during this portion of the meeting via Q&A or by using the hand raising. Um, I don't have anything to report, but um, we do need to elect as we've pointed out, this is going to be interesting now, um, election of the trustee officer, treasurer and the secretary to begin service July 2020. Now, um, three of us have, Roland, have you heard from the mayor? No. <laughs> Nor have I. So here he is. How should we do this to uh, Diana? I would, I would assume that you'll be reappointed because he's not reached out to me um, to ask, you know, about putting somebody else in to see, you know, he does, that he say he has someone in mind, wanted to know if I had a library card or anything like that. Um, and with everything that's going on, I would imagine he's busy. Um, in the past, when um, when we've been in this, it's not uncommon for us with any mayor to be in this situation in June where they've not yet responded to everyone to say that whether or not they'd be reappointed. Um, so I would assume that you will be, and then if you're not, then we could go ahead, um, if, if you were elected to, um, appointed to an office, um, and, and just redo that um, appointment in July um, if necessary. But I assume you're going to be uh, well. So I'm a little confused because on the agenda it says treasurer and secretary. But in the director's report, it seems like it's the president and vice president are expiring. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me take a look. That's 
different. Okay. Yeah, it is. So I guess we're filling all four. Just no, kidding. you're not. Um, it is incorrect in, in the um, in the agenda. It's incorrect. Yes. Do you want to go ahead since the agenda is incorrect and um, make your determinations now and then finalize them in July with a corrected agenda and more information about whether or not you've actually been reappointed? That way, you would know what your role, what your intended role is, but it wouldn't be official till July. Doesn't matter. Anybody have an opinion on that? I think we should just go right ahead. Vote, <laughs> vote our people in. Just get it over. Now, uh, to that effect. Um, they expire. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Robert. I would prefer not to serve another term as president, uh, whether appointed or not, by the mayor. So uh, with that in mind, is there, uh, are there other nominations for those offices? Susan, you're, um, of course, eligible, eligible for another um, term as vice president, but would you be interested in serving as president? And if so, I'd like to nominate you to do that. <laughs> I would, I mean, I'd be willing to be vice president again. I'm not certain about president since I'm president of the WSIU Friends Board right now. And two boards, being president of two boards is going to push me over the edge. <laughs> well, uh, are there any other nominations or suggestions or volunteers? It's always nice to have a volunteer. I would like to know whether, uh, Phil, would you want to be president again? I know you have been president. Uh, I, just, I, I was just president before. Yeah. So maybe maybe not. Maybe somebody else should be. Don, what about you? Are you take another are you run. going to be president of this August body? I certainly would be honored, but I have done it before. I'd be happy to do it again if that was the will. That would be great. Okay. I nominate Don Crosser then. To be I president. vote yes. <laughs> I, I'll I'll second I'll second before okay. Roman votes yet. Okay. okay, there and we also um you have to do roll call votes now um in a Zoom, in a Zoom environment, unfortunately. So. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor nominating Don Proctor as the new president, a second by Phil Brown. Would you call the roll, please? Do you want to include the vice president or do that in a separate, do we have to do a vote on that if I'm just willing to continue? I think you could do it in a lump sum if you, if someone wants to, um, uh, so if that motion could be amended to include Susan as vice president. I'll do that. Okay. So the motion now stands that we have Don Crosser's president and Susan Tillis Vice President. Now, any other volunteers or nominations? All right. I'll all speak at once. Okay. <laughs> Call the roll. We have to have a roll vote on every uh, okay. issue. So, <clears throat> what? Yes. Pardon me? I wasn't sure if Roland was. Are you. Calling the roll, or are you? Who does? Okay. okay. You, do. you do, Roland. Okay, Barbara? Yes. Susan? Yes. Me? Yes. Julian? Phil? I. Joyce? Chastity? Yes. Don? Abstain. Harriet? We lost Harriet. Yeah. 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 Hmm. We're going to need her back to have a quorum. I was just going to say. <laughs> what happened? She must have had a technical problem. Hmm. 
Let's get back. There she is. She's back. I was, yeah, I'm back. I lost the connection for a minute. I wanted to vote yes on that. Okay. <laughs> so noted. Sorry. All right. There are, is that five in favor? And none opposed, so the motion carries, and we have new officers starting in July 20. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> you have the minutes of the last meeting before you. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? <clears throat> if not, I have a motion to approve the minutes. Yes. And a second is... So oh, we have uh, Roland, and who's the second? A second. Oh, hang on, okay. Julian just raised his hand. Let me let him in here. It looks Julian. like he didn't come in through the, um, well done. We, we had a chance to elect him president while he was. No, we, I <laughs> thought about it. Yeah. it. Go ahead and tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> And there are two phone call listeners as well, but that I think one, like Gwen. Uh, no, I hung up because you hung up. Okay, so there are two phone calls, phone call listeners, which is fine. They'll just if they need to speak, they can use the hand raising motion or the chat. Okay. okay. Yeah. Looks yeah. like Julian's mic is muted. Um, let me unmute Julian. One second. I unmuted him and then he unmuted himself. Julian, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you Can go. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can hear you, but I can't see you. Julian, if you'd just been in there just a little sooner, you could have been president. Oh, no. I don't need that again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now where were we? We have the motion to Roland approve. made a motion on the secretary's report, and I don't know if a second was made. Did we have a second for the minutes from the previous? I'll second. I'll second it, Susan. We have to call the roll for this as well? Apparently. All right, call the roll. Barbara. Yes. Susan. Yes. Me. Yes. Julian. Here. That's not a proper. <laughs> You're voting yes or no on the minutes. Oh, uh, yes. Bill. Yes. Joyce. Chastity. Yes. Don. Yes. Harriet. Yes. Motion carries. Do you have correspondence or communication? I have two, actually, both from the State Library. Um, one is that um, we got our per capita grant award letter, which says that we will get our per capita grant um, for 2020 in the amount of $32,377.50. Um, and we also got notice from uh, the State Library that we once again did not get our Live and Learn funding. Um, so, Honestly, that's a little bit of a relief to me. I don't want to um, manage a, a construction project in the middle of, of a pandemic anyway. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it actually gives us a little bit of a cushion. We had budgeted um, to, uh, to be able to meet our $120,000 match on that. Um, and so, uh, we may very well need the cushion um, this year. We hadn't taken it specifically out of of, um, of building funds. It was just general levy, so it can be reallocated to something else. Um, and uh, we do probably need to replace the brush roof this year um, because it's leaking. And um, it is a much less expensive project, uh, the quote that we had on that. Of course, it would need to go out for bid, but the quote we had on that was about 42000 So it's a more affordable project. If we can get one roof done, then we're not in such a dire emergency. I just didn't want it to both end up um, needing to be replaced in the first in a single year. So 
Um, so it's not a, a big tragedy to be turned down at this point. Good. Yeah. Good. So you'll apply again. Yeah, I'll, I'll try again in the future. Um, I don't know if it was limited funds um, or uh, it, they do all the other categories before they get to construction on, on medium and larger libraries. So um, we're, we're the, we are priority number three. Um, last year they didn't get to us and this year we didn't get it either. <laughs> Third time's the charm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Gwen, are you there? For the yes. financial support, the bills payable. Uh, yes, the bills to be paid is uh the total is thirty thousand eight seventy three fifty three, and um, that includes some things that were kind of being held, like we were collecting packages while we were closed, and then once we started getting mail again, they all came in a rush. So we had got a lot of books in, uh, two insurance bills, and uh, some different dues and things like that, and. Yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions about any, and we're paying our SAM fee for our computers, which actually went down a bit. I'm not sure why. I might actually call them to find out the the math behind that because it's gone up and down so many times. I'm kind of confused by it. I wouldn't call if it goes down. I'd only call if it goes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm confused because it used to be 700, and then it went up to 1500. I thought because we got more computers, and now it's down to 867. Like, okay. Uh -huh. But yeah, you're right. Maybe I should just let it lie. <laughs> <laughs> Any other might be a timing issue on their part. Maybe they had undercharged just one year and then put it back in. And their bills are not very descriptive. It just says, "Pay us this," <laughs> pretty much. Any other questions? I have a motion to approve the bills payable. So moved. Second. 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 Call the roll. Barbara. Yes. Susan. Yes. Me. Yes. Julian. Yes. Bill. Yes. Joyce. Chastity. Yes. Don. Yes. Harriet. Yes. Motion carried. All right. How about a financial report, Gwen? Um, not much has happened yet. We're still pretty low on income. We haven't received any to, at all, basically. Um, and then I got a couple notes back from the city, very minor reclassifications for last year. And then I think we'll do, once we actually meet in person again, I'm going to print out last year so you guys can review it more thoroughly uh, when we meet again someday. Um, but not much has happened on the uh, this year's side so far. Any questions or comments? Need a motion to approve or accept the financial report. So moved. I'll second. second. Call the roll. Barbara. Yes. Susan. Yes. Me. Yes. Julian. Yes. Bill. Yes. Joyce. Chastity. Yes. Don. Yes. Harriet. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, okay. We'll do the director's report. Okay. Um, and Gwen, you have to stay or go. Gwen is on vacation today and came in for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for working from home. All right, thanks. Take care. Bye, Gwen. See you, Gwen. Thank you, um, Gwen. Bye. Building and grounds. Um, we have done a lot of work, well mostly Josh has done a lot of work um, to prepare for us to be um, able to accept people um, to the building at some point in the future. Uh, we have, he has built um, a plexiglass surround around our circulation glass, which is actually quite beautiful. Um, and uh, also created barriers um, around the staff desks, um, which mostly consist of clear shower curtains. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we've separated out the computers so that they're, uh, they're each six feet apart. 
we lose about three or four computers only by doing that. Um, so it's not too big of an impact on our ability to provide service. Um, we are also, uh, we've put like step and pulls on the, um, the bathroom door so you can just step and pull it um, instead of using the handle if you prefer. Um, and we are replacing the water fountain system, um, which I think is original for the building and was kind of looking a little shabby anyway. Um, this was Gwen's wonderful idea uh, that uh, uh, we then investigated. And, and yes, it does seem to be a popular thing to do right now. So we are putting in a new water fountain system. Um, it's a, a cup holder with uh, paper cups um, and a water bottle uh, filler, basically. So they can fill a water bottle or a cup um, at the water fountain, but the spigots that people would drink directly out of will be um, stable. And then when this is over, we can re-enable those. Um, but that will keep people from, um, from being at it's sort of a germ hot spot where you're lowering your face and drinking right where somebody else was just drinking. Um, so those are some of the maintenance things that we've done in order to um, prepare for eventually letting people in. Um, the, uh, the brush building has a leak in it. Um, and we had Bane come over and do some, um, uh, um, some patches for anything that he could see. Um, it still is leaking. Um, we're going to have the gutters, uh, in, on that building, um, uh, cleaned to see if that will help. Um, and uh, Josh is going to go up there and see if he can figure out anything out. Um, but it's leaking one spot. Um, it can be really difficult to figure out why there's a leak. Um, could also be coming through the wall rather than the um, ceiling, or rather than through the roof. It's difficult to tell. Um, but uh, to replace the, the brush roof is about $42,000. Um, and I will, I'm, I'm working on you know, analyzing this past year's budget um, and the coming year's budget. Um, we'll need to do an amendment again since we did not get the um, per capita grant. But as I said earlier, the, it, we'll, the fact that we didn't get it actually provides us some budgetary wiggle room in order to, to handle some things. Um, and replacing the brush roof is a lot cheaper than replacing the roof on the main building. Um, the roof on the main building is not in, uh, in dire straits right now. It's just going to be coming due. Um, so uh, those are the, the concerns in terms of building and grounds. Um, the other thing to talk about would be um, curbside service. It's going well. Um, we, uh, I'm not sure exactly. I haven't done a strict analysis on it, but it seems like we're doing about between 30 and 50 per day. Um, we are uh, offering curbside service during the, the full hours that we're here, pretty much. Um, you know, we don't allow we we don't schedule them to come you know, within 15 minutes of closing because they may show up late and then not, um, we might already be gone. Um, but uh, we have them coming, basically we're open seven days a week uh, for curbside service. We're also doing curbside printing, um, faxing, um, and doing a lot in terms of, uh, of uh, our summer reading program, our Project Next Generation, um, all with um, packet pickup and virtual programming. Um, I, another library called to compliment us on everything that we've been doing. We've been kind of setting standards. So um, I'm happy to hear that, um, that people think we're doing well. We've not really gotten complaints or anything like that. Um, people seem to be grateful for, for what it, we are able to provide. Um, Diane, are most of the requests coming in for specific items or general that you have to choose? Um, I'm not sure because it's not always me. Um, the staff are working their full schedules, so I'm not always the one to take the, the call. I mean, I've done some of them, and I've done, I've done it both ways. I've picked things out for people. Um, I've also had people ask for specific things. I, a lot, what I did see a lot of was sort of a hybrid, of, um, particularly with children's items. Like we want books by this author, any any of these kinds of movies. Um, this 
these couple of specific books and then and then anything about nature you know things like that um so we're doing a little bit of picking from what's really from uh that's specific and a little bit of of sort of reader advisory work um so it's been fun um to provide that for our patrons um i'm gonna say i used it and i was very pleased with the delivery service I was getting some DVDs, and but the site for the DVD, I hadn't really used the site before. It's a little not intuitive. It's a little confusing. You have to get used to it. So, you know, the books seem to be easier. Maybe I've just I've done, done those more. You know? mm -hmm. I thought I'd say that. But I was very pleased with the service. Lynette brought me my DVDs. I was <laughs> said that you said hi. So. <laughs> Um, he said it's okay to return them in the book drop. Yeah, um, we are allowing people to return DVDs in the book drop. Um, it, to return anything in the book drop, if they call and ask about returning magazines, I ask them to put it in an envelope if they can, like in a big envelope. Um, and because uh, that's the only way that people can get things back to us. Um, we've also, um, it's been very confusing for patrons as far as like telling them to hang on to stuff and return stuff. So um, we uh, have worked with the system. What we will do is um, not charge people fines as long as something comes back in June. Um, and then it'll go back to regular fines in July just to give people a chance to, to yeah. catch on. Um, and, uh, you know, we're asking people to be really um, accommodating to us in, in – um, you know, using library services in a whole new way, so we're trying to be accommodating to them as well. Yeah. Um, Good idea. Good idea. Um, and we don't really have a way to collect fines um, at this moment either, um, apart from asking them to, to log into our website and pay a fine that way, mm -hmm. which if it's just a dollar or two isn't really, you know, worth the cost of the visa. Um, but, uh, we have to, we have taken, um, you know, non-resident fees that way. Um, so that is, that's really our best way of, of making money. Now we do curbside, with the curbside printing, we are taking money that way. So, because we're bringing them an envelope and they're putting their money and the things they need printed into the envelope, we take it back. Um, and then we bring them their change and their copies that we made or you know, their originals, everything, whatever they need. So, um, so we are taking a little bit of money in that way, but it's not a whole lot. Um, if they have a library card, we also can just put it on their, um, their account as a, a charge. Um, but not everybody has a, a library card who needs that kind of service. Um, the thing that I am really keeping my eye on is, um, you know, how open are we in comparison to other libraries and when will other libraries be open more? Um, right now, um, we've got our staff scheduled to, uh, to work a full schedule, but it's a different schedule than we normally have. We ha I have, um, I'm keeping it at 10 people or fewer in the building at any time. Um, so we have an 8 a.m. to 3.50 p.m. shift and then a 4.10 to 8 p.m. shift. Um, there are a few people who intersect, so if you normally would work 11.30 a.m. to, to 8 p.m., then that's their schedule. Um, I've got uh, some people are have needed to work from home for child care reasons. Um, fortunately, they are people who can work from home um, and, uh, and do. Um, I'm working from home a, a little bit, too, to, to reduce the number of, of bodies in the building at times. Um, the... Uh, um, the Illinois State Library has said that they are um, working on creating guidelines for libraries when it comes to capacity. Right now, it's very unclear whether we are supposed to imagine that we are a gathering, at which point, at which point we would be 10 people or fewer, which is what we're doing, or whether we are able to imagine ourselves as retail. Um, which would be a capacity issue. Um, the capacity is something like um, five people for every 1,000 feet of retail space. Um, 
just a rough estimate for me, that would be about 50 people in the building at a time, which if we were not doing programs at all, we can probably stay within um, fairly easily. Um, but we do not yet really have full permission or full legal guidance on whether or not that is okay because everything has just been left up to municipalities to decide for themselves what they want to do. Um, libraries down here are not open. Um, some of them are just starting curbside service this week. Um, we were kind of ahead of, of most um, when the Southern did an article on us as far as curbside service. Um, uh, it was us and Heron. Uh, we've, uh, Marion, I think is, Marion and Murfreesboro are maybe just getting going. Um, so we've been serving a lot of their patrons. Um, uh, um, DeCoin opened its doors. Um, they are one of those little libraries that probably don't normally have more than 10 people in the building at any time. Um, they also do, probably don't deal with some of the behavioral issues that we would deal with. I have twice been contacted by a patron who um, says that he's really anxious to come back but uh, doesn't want to wear a mask. Um, I've asked many people many times for guidance on this and I've looked at the state website which basically just says that if they claim that it's a medical reason you can't ask for proof um, and you have to provide reasonable accommodations. Um, I, that could be simply telling them they can only use curbside service. They don't currently have a way to provide accommodation for someone who wants to use a computer. Um, uh, so that potentially could be an ADA issue. Um, I know that a lot of stores are not wanting to argue with people and they're just letting people in. That really, really worries me. Um, I have a couple of vulnerable staff and we have a lot of senior patrons. Um, as well, and I feel like if you walk in here with uh, with COVID and you don't know that you have it and you refuse to wear a mask, that you very well could be killing people in here. Um, and uh, it's difficult for people to grasp that. Um, the person I have had this conversation with twice just says, oh, I would never, I would never do that, but you're refusing to wear a mask and you don't know if you have it, so, <laughs> so yes, you would. Um, so it's really difficult to figure out kind of how, particularly in terms of environment, we have um, we serve a population that can sometimes be um, uh, argumentative and, and sometimes have um, issues that that make it difficult for them to to be able to be you know um, to understand when we're trying to uh, be rational with them. Um, I looked at Chicago Public, which is open. Um, uh, which scares me and their employees are very upset. Um, but they're open and they have, um, they have, which they've got plenty of staff, they've got people at the door um, doing like a head count and, and not letting, you know, you, you may have to wait in line to go to Chicago Public Library. Um, I don't know if, what, if they are behaving as bouncers essentially and forcing people to wear masks. Um, their website doesn't say anything about accommodations. It just says you will wear a mask. And if you don't have a mask, we'll give you a mask. Um, we do have paper masks. Um, I uh, don't want to be the free mask store, so I would probably ask for a donation early um, in exchange for that paper mask. Um, but that's my concern is, is um, a lot of libraries are saying, particularly libraries our size, are saying that they are not going to open their doors to the public until we are at Illinois is at stage four. And um, right now Illinois is at stage three. If we were at stage four, um, that would probably bring us to about 50 people in the building, however we calculate it. Um, and, uh, and then really the mask issue is, is one of the larger issue, what to, what to do about that. I know like, um, for example, the co-op, they were handing out masks at the door, but they told their staff not to argue with people about it because it's dangerous. Um, there have been incidents, not locally, but there have been incidents where people have um, gotten physically violent because they were asked to wear a mask. Um, there have been incidents where they have spat on people, um, and uh, which is actually a felony um, uh, for 
uh, being told to wear a mask. So I'm not sure. That's really, for me, a big hurdle. Um, but a lot of libraries our size are saying that they're not going to do it until we reach stage four. The way that we wrote our um, uh, guidelines, um, I did not uh, line it up specifically with the stages in Illinois. This is really tried to make it as fluid as possible um, so that we could accommodate whatever situations we need to accommodate. I would really love to hear your thoughts on this as board members, what you would like to see um, and uh, any thoughts, concerns, or suggestions you have. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask people to wear masks in this day, you know, or to, or to require them to. And I, I understand the difficulty of asking for a medical reason that they can't. There are people, it's very difficult, asthma and a few other things, but, yeah. Could, could we, ask, if they if they didn't want to wear a mask, could we ask, ask that they show proof of having been tested within the past few days that they were COVID-19 free or... I have not looked at that. I know we can't ask, I don't think so, because we can't ask them, for ADA reasons, we can't ask them for proof of disability. Um, like I can't ask for a doctor's note saying that they have asthma. So I don't think we probably can ask for proof of a COVID-19 test. Um, I also think it's, while I appreciate that idea, I think it's probably unrealistic and then it's difficult to get a COVID-19 test. You, um, you have to, um, as I understand it, you can't just say, I need, I need it for whatever reason. I just want to know. Um, need to go to the library. <laughs> yeah, I needed to go to the library. I mean, I, I think they're basically trying to reserve those tests for people who are either symptomatic or who have been contact, uh, contact traced to a, uh, a symptomatic person. I'd be interested in knowing what Susan's doing at SIU. Mm -hmm, me too. Got to unmute yourself. Well, we're struggling with that just as well. I mean, we actually are not open to the public yet. Um, and we go back and forth as to how we're going to handle people coming in. We have not been provided with any guidance from the administration yet. Um, we thought we were gonna get it at the end of May, but I think at this point, they're probably waiting for the new chancellor to come in because the old chancellor just said, we're still operating like we have been, you know, everybody's staying at home to work. Um, you know, the advantage is there are no in-person classes this summer. We do have a small area, study area, and a computer lab that is open and, you know, is basically unstaffed. Um, on any given day in the computer lab, there's probably three to six people. There's only 14 computers in there. And in the study space, it ranges from, you know, like three to eight, but it's pretty well spread out. You know, what my, would you do with my, about the mask issue, Susan? Well, my staff keeps saying, "What are you know? Is it going to be required?" And we've heard different things. Some departments on campus are saying you have to wear a mask all day, every day. And which, if you're in your office by yourself, I'm not going to be wearing a mask. But you know, we don't know if we're going to be required to have someone sit at the entrance to tell people. Sorry, you need a mask. Um, I mean, I'm, you know, these are college age kids who are probably not going to do it. And, you know, again, it's the sort of thing, you know, my staff is not going to want to get into a fight with somebody. You know, what they're asking me is, can we call campus police? Well, yeah, well, you've got <laughs> campus police, which we don't. Yes, but they are not going to come running for because one person refused to wear a mask. I mean, right, right, no mask, no Right. I mean, we've been told we're going to get specific signage to put in the door. You know, the entrances. 
um, so that we can't, we can't even make our own signage. We're supposed to use their standardized signage, which hasn't been delivered to us yet, which I find interesting because we technically do have an area that's open right now. And most of the people in there are not wearing masks. I mean, I hardly ever go out in that area. So it's, a, it's going to be a challenge. You know, we just started pulling books for people and we're putting them on open hold shelves. So we are having a little bit more interaction out in that area because that's where the books are sitting waiting to be picked up. Now, based on what I heard yesterday, the, there was some confusion about uh, asymptomatic versus presymptomatic and that uh, people who were actually asymptomatic, um, you're quite unlikely to be contaminated. You know, it's, it's not likely for it to be spread by those people, but it's the pre-symptomatic people, people who have been exposed to it, who are in their two week period of incubation while the, the disease has its effect. And those are the ones that, uh, you know, those people should definitely be wearing masks, but you know, we've got all kinds of attitude depending on. Right. Um, yeah. I think the prudent thing is, as you've suggested that you plan to do is to wait for the phase four. And at, at this point, I think that's what I would do. During phase four, would you have to wear a mask also? Yeah. I mean, I just see, like we, like we said, there's so many different attitudes about it. Most people, when I go in stores, wear masks, but you're going to have those people who don't want to wear a mask for whatever reason, and it could be a reason that can make them upset, and you don't want to put your staff in danger. Right. Because I've seen it happen at the co-op. Like, I've seen people like, get in an argument about it, like cussing and yelling and screaming because, like, somebody just said, why don't you have a mask on? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the co op, which has probably not the most combative um, population. Right. <laughs> well, and, you know, when you think about it, it's, it's, it's really pretty disrespectful not to wear a mask. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so it really becomes, uh, you know, these people are quite, quite selfish, uh, selfish in their outlook, in my opinion. So, but I, I'm, I'm, Pro mask. I wear a mask everywhere. I, I, you know, when I'm out and can't social distance, in the, like in a store or whatever, I've got a mask on. No, it Simple as that. Okay. I think uh, you probably haven't gotten much guidance from us, Diana, but uh, I think you'll handle it in the way that's um, most prudent and and with whatever guidelines and laws are in force at the time and. Let's just hope things get better and soon we'll all be able to move around freely and safely. And I don't know. I, I and the flu will be here. In the <laughs> flu time, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think we've got to stay good at, at like, dealing with germs. I don't think anyone's ever going to get the flu or a common cold ever again. So. <laughs> Do you have anything else then? You, what else can we, we help you with as far as making those decisions? Well, I think what I will do is basically just hold off. I know um, if we get to phase four, then then by then I should be um, equipped to deal with it. And if we're not in phase four, by the time we have another board meeting, we can revisit it. Um, if that sounds amenable to, to all of you. Um, yes. That's fine with me. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's move on. Okay. We, have, we have the FOIA and OMA officers, and I guess we do have to make changes. Some of you will have to uh, take your little test, see if you can pass. But the FOIA, let's see who's in, we have uh, Gwen and Susan, uh, Diana rather, so you're okay. Yeah. And uh, Don, will he have to take that again now? Um, yeah, I think uh, actually not FOIA, but OMA. So um, Don 
as the president would be, um, I assume at this, you know, you're going to um, appoint him at this point to be the OMA officer. So the president should take that OMA training um, through the state. And then anyone who is reappointed. So um, assuming that you will be reappointed, Barbara and Roland and Harriet, you would need to take the, the Open Meetings Act training again as well. So it's always being appointed or reappointed, and then the board president always takes LMA. Nobody has to take FOIA unless they are a FOIA officer. Um, and it wouldn't even make sense to have board members as FOIA officers because you have to have all this information at your fingertips. So. Okay, well, well um, I guess wait for the word from the mayor and Don can go ahead with his, I suppose, any time. I can't wait to learn more about it. <laughs> uh, but it's within 30 days, right? Okay. Uh, yes, within 30 days. So, um, so you, what you'll need to do at this moment is make a, a motion in a second and take a roll call to, um, someone will need to make a motion that the FOIA officers will be Gwen and Diana and the OMA officers, uh, officer will be um, Don Prosser. So moved. Second. Uh, Call the roll. Barbara. Yes. Susan. Me, yes. Julian. She's Phil. Mute. Yes. Oh, let me get in. Julian got knocked out and let me put him back in. And I did vote yes, I was muted. <laughs> Julian, you're allowed to talk. Okay, <laughs> I, 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 I vote yes. <laughs> Chastity? Yes. Don? Yes. Harriet? Where's Harriet? There she is. She looks frozen. Yeah, she does look frozen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a feature where you freeze the screen, so you run out to the bathroom and then you come back. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could count her as absent. <laughs> Abstain. I don't know what to point out. will say she's, I guess, absent. I don't know. <laughs> she just not, actually, she just dropped out. So she's, she's coming back in. She's, and she's, we'll she's having some okay. trouble today. Mm -hmm. We'll check back with her if she checks back in. So the, at the, this moment, the motion has carried. Yeah. Uh, we have some closed session minutes. What? I move that they continue to be closed. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, we can't do that. We have to do roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Barbara? Yes. Susan? Yes. Me? Yes. Julian? Yes. Bill? Yes. Chastity? Yes. Don? Yes. And the mysterious Harriet. Oh my. Oh, Harriet's back. There she is. My oh. computer is unstable. I just got that message, but it does flick in and out. I don't know why, but it's been doing Happened that. to me, Harriet. Yeah, really? Yeah. We took Harriet, do you approve closed minutes? Be approved, keeping the minutes from the closed sessions closed? Yes, yes. Okay. The two good. <laughs> yeah, both. Oh, yeah, officer. Both. Oh, okay. All right. Do uh, you have anything else to report to us, Diana? Um, not really. I, um, I just want to commend our staff on um, their adaptability and everything they've been doing. Um, they have uh managed to find new ways to do absolutely everything under the sun and um they are doing beautiful virtual programs um our website is uh just really in great shape from jennifer robertson um 
I also uh, want to commend um, Chastity's daughters. Um, I was not able to attend, but there was a, um, a vigil um, that was organized by her two teenage daughters. And um, I've just, I saw photos and everybody just says it was just beautiful. And, and the fact that two teenage girls um, could pull that off is to me not surprising because I know your daughters, um, but, um, but just very admirable and um, really impressive. Thank you. <laughs> I met one of your daughters that one time. You gave me a ride and she was delightful. So it's good to hear that. That's good. Thanks. <laughs> Well, I too, I'd like to commend Diana and, and this list of uh, online meetings that you've attended uh, has to set a record. <laughs> My goodness. I wanted to share with the board something uh, I thought was kind of interesting that you had worked out posting these uh, uh, stories on the Green Earth uh, pathways, but you should be informed that there's been some vandalism. Oh, has there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Apparently, uh, uh, I don't know who or why anyone would be so involved, but apparently a couple of the stakes have been knocked down, and uh, I don't know what they've done with the, the actual laminated part or not, but uh, you might check with Stephanie at, at Green Earth about if they need anything, because I know that she's been alerted to this problem. Okay. I will um, have our, our children's library and reach out to her um, and if she needs to re-laminate pages or bring new yeah. states or whatever, we'll take care of it. That's a pretty cool <laughs> idea, by the way. When I walked on the trail and saw them there, I was kind of impressed. So. Yeah, it was a cool idea. Um, Francine is, uh, is really doing fantastic. I mean, to walk in as a brand new librarian, only partway through library school, um, as a children's librarian, which is a difficult, difficult job, um, and to walk in and do really impressive creative work um, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, where nothing is what you expected it to be, um, is just super impressive to me. I was just looking at, at um, like our Facebook posts and, and that the post about, <laughs> Um, about the uh, little trail um, was just off the charts in terms of people who had viewed, um, had viewed and liked that. So, um, yeah, she's, she's really doing impressive work during really trying times and for a, a brand new librarian. It's just really amazing to me. Okay. I guess that's all for the librarian's report. Are there any committee reports? Unfinished business, new business. I hope no patron behavior since we don't have any patrons. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have nothing further. Any other comments? If not, the meeting's adjourned and I hope we can see each other in person soon. All right, stay Bye, well. Everyone. Be well. Bye, everyone. Okay. Stay Bye -bye. well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.